Hi all, I have a very interesting course to show you at Chessboard today, Reign Supreme the King's Engine Attack by FM Fide Master Kaidas90, that's his nickname on Lee Chess and other sites. So this is Kamil Plichta and he's done excellent video commentary. In fact, there's a huge amount of video footage in uh, the paid version of the course, but even in the free one, there's 14 hours and 42 minutes of paid video and um, free menu video one hour and 30. So uh, it's early days for this course. He's done other excellent courses. So the key things about this King's Engine attack, very few forced lines. So your opponents won't be able to prepare with computer like variations, easy to learn. So more based on plans and understanding. King safety guaranteed. Yeah, when you Fianchetto, often you're more solid, you're king. And it's harder to go wrong. This is uh, uh, a very important thing sometimes, making it uh, actually harder to do mistakes. Uh, so especially at the faster time limits, a lot of us play uh, nowadays. Uh, this is very flexible and represents a system you can use with white. For example, like we know also you know other systems like the london system popular but the king's engine attack is a great system with the white pieces uh, all time controls so let's have a look now let's browse okay now i've um picked out uh, things that i really passionately agree with from from this selection of chapters and if we look uh, at the introduction the first thing which hit me actually uh was in the introduction video the preference for um e4 as opposed to knight f3 because i hate playing against the london system uh, when i'm black when i play the king's engine defense now when you play the king's engine attack you can actually rule out uh, reverse london systems by playing e4 first and he explains that that nuance play e4 first instead of knight f3 and still get the king's engine style positions but you rule out d5 and bishop f5 and bishop g4 systems so if you hate the london system as much as me that is a very important uh, thing to bear in mind what you want to avoid uh, so check out this video here he will go into that um, so okay now here's a key variation which uh, we'll, we'll see this move order so e4 first e6 and now d3 so we're going this path to get this king's engine set up so he picks on the most popular openings first, French defense, Sicilian, Karakhan, and then he sort of covers everything else as well. Uh, so, but the main systems, d3 here, so we get this d5, knight d2, now knight f3, knight c6. Uh, there's a very interesting uh, thing observed here because I would play this as black with a certain idea and he's definitely outlined why you don't always want to Fianchetto your bishop uh, because black is prepared to uh, play d takes and bishop c5 but here bishop b5 so he is open-minded it's not always Fianchetting the bishop and uh, white should be absolutely uh, doing well here for example this position where white's got nice plans uh, and I've used this myself quite a bit as well this kind of approach the king's engine attack at various time controls so he's not completely like dogmatic about the fianchetto and i thought that demonstrates he's pretty open-minded throughout uh, the course let's have a look at uh, a key idea which is one of my favorite from from nimsvich when you have a pawn on e5 i feel that it can be used as a sort of kingside attack lever and he's graphically illustrated of all these arrows uh, the kind of fisher era plan when when fisher uh, before 15 was playing uh, less theoretically king's engine attack was a great weapon of choice and fish had many brilliant games and maybe actually we might revisit some of those in the next few days in, in conjunction with uh, highlighting this course so one of the the key fisher plans which always gripped me um with white always black when fisher was playing the king's engine defense with black and you play the king's engine attack with white you get this bind on the center and then you can sort of play h4 and sometimes h5 h6 with the form pawn you weaken the dark squares and the knight can sometimes swivel one of the knights uh into g4 and then, then maybe into f6 later it's very very dangerous ideas when you're leaning over the king side so he goes into these ideas uh so that's very very interesting for me to see uh, this guide so you can easily navigate uh, an overview if you don't want to just do um, the quizzing you just get an overview with next page and previous page to get the ideas first uh, so that's really really cool 
Uh, so, um, okay. Now, versus the French defence, I picked one interesting uh, thing he mentioned that this is quite an aggressive plan for Black. If we look at this system, where in the French defence they're playing uh, quite aggressively on the Queen side. So uh, how do you deal with that? And in fact, there's also this idea by Alf Ar Armand, one of the great French defence exponents, uh, where he came up with this idea of actually a key move, Queen E8 here, which sometimes means, you know, the, the Queen is met quite well with sometimes the F-pawn moving, uh, hitting that with tempo sometimes. Uh, but here, Bronstein innovated with Queen G4, and there's actually a very, very tactical idea here, which was missed by Ullman. And if, if Ullman can miss it, I think this is going to be dangerous for, for our faster time controls, especially online. Knight takes e6. That just opens up that check and then winning the loose piece on c6. So as with all these courses, there are there are basic... Uh, the, the basic checklist is, is still emphasised. Check all checks. Uh, try and look at the downsides of the opponent's position, like loose pieces. Uh, uh, so that that holds true. He he's illustrating that you know there are tactics with this cold spring setup. There's a lot of energy behind it. It keeps the tension, and he has uh, emphasised throughout. It's actually a great weapon for beating lower-rated players because they might be trying to get you theoretically or into forcing lines. So keeping it quiet, keeping it more positional, more about ideas and positional play, is a very very good idea. But there are some tactical ideas like this. Uh, now against the Sicilian, I've hi I've highlighted this particular page he was talking about. There's another thematic sack, which you kind of you see in the in the Morris Smith uh, course. The idea of sacking on d5. So look at this, Queen e2. Uh, so when Black's committed to d5, and now look at this, e5, and now c4. This is a fantastic idea of the Queen e2. You've got the the strong point here, and you're hitting Black's pawn chain hard. And he's mentioned statistics actually throughout, which I find really quite interesting and reassuring, because um, because a lot of this is is uh, more positional, and if you, you like neural networks are on probability of of winning, so it's nice to have this kind of probability of winning in the same sort of vein for these positional variations. So d takes c4, d takes uh, queen c7. And White's definitely getting a nice bind, a nice space advantage. And he, he does uh, also warn quite interestingly, because of this default, sometimes um, the direct attacks, there might be a bit of counterplay. But uh, here, there's a very nice uh, tactical idea, knight d5, because the bishops align with the queen. So that's, that spells quite a lot of danger for black. So, yeah, it's it's carnage there from that position. White's getting a really really good position there are a couple of key traps to avoid and i thought i should highlight these uh so and it, there's probably numerous others he's, he's mentioned but these are the ones i stumbled on which are really really important if you're playing against the kara khan and you want to play the king's injured attack so d3 e5 knight f3 knight f6 do not play <laughs> knight takes e5 here uh, so he mentions queen a5 check. So the cheeky Khan does open up the queen. You've got to be careful about that. Uh, but somehow, yeah, White even won those games. I don't know if they're on faster time control or something for, for that blunder to happen. So that's one uh, trap to avoid. So just go with this kind of cool spring setup. A lot of energy behind it. And you can play on the queen side with b4, as this shows. So getting queen side space. And then c4. So nice and positional, the ideas. And often about fragmenting the pawn structure. And here he highlights there's two routes to use that d5 hole. I think white's in a better position to exploit d5 than black is to exploit d4 here. It really also, it's not just the structure, it depends on the piece arrangement. But I th here I think white's going to be slightly better, as, as he mentions. There's another key trap to avoid, which I'll highlight from my notes, which he's uh, mentioned. Uh, so let's look at this variation. So e4, e6, d3, d5, knight d2, knight f6, knight f3, the early bishop c5. So he says that if, if there are pieces developed on the c-file quite early, you should be a bit cynical about playing g3, especially a bishop looking at a soft spot here. It's it's a little bit of a danger sign when the soft spot is interrogated, kind of. So c3 is the recommendation here. So not... Uh, so try and avoid playing stereotypically. G3, um, 
let's see so e e5 is inaccurate because of this and um, that is a tempo down uh, that transposition so black's doing well there but g3 look at black hitting the soft spot d takes knight takes that this is just horrible because a bishop takes f2 trying to drag uh, the queen away that's that's not very pleasant and also here um so so he he think he actually recommends after c3 let's have a look d takes knight takes e4 this is a bit of a cheeky idea making use of queen a4 check but the queen actually can park on the king side so making use of the loose piece there and parking quite interestingly on g3 with some attacking prospects so yeah there's some traps to avoid here if um if yeah not always playing for g3 basically that's a very very important consideration okay so he, he mentions that rule of thumb okay so uh okay versus e5 and g6 now he's got whole chapters if we look at the chapter list you'll see it starts with french then sicilian then coracon and then miscellaneous kind of so within here within the miscellaneous uh, there's a very very interesting idea so within uh, the miscellaneous section there's a very very interesting idea let's get to that from the start e4 g6 knight f3 bishop g7 d3 e5 but here because you've got pressure on e5 it's difficult for black to play knight f6 and it actually it does make h4 potentially more effective so there's no knight f6 and if you get in h5 you're threatening either a form pawn or some nasties and if black has to give up more control of the g5 square this actually is pretty nice for white white can even play for d4 and we get a position like this where uh it's it's possible to get some sort of attack later on the king side and uh you can even yeah just castle king side i i, I would probably castle king side and there's some ideas because that b file is quite dangerous so white wants the castle short and if necessary sacrifice the b2 pawn in fact so his idea in in the, in the pawn sack that uh, i i saw was actually to exploit the, the the knight on e7 put a rook on e1 threatening all sorts of nasties there so very very interesting novel idea there presented with only h4 uh, so the mis miscellaneous section is full of goodies as well to tap into the model games this really got me as well actually because there's actually a model player who's uh, around ne nearly 2700 at the moment Bassem uh, Bassem is a uh, a key exponent I wasn't aware of this so he's got lots of key games of uh, Basim I mean Basim to check out so very very interesting uh, play there's also Fisher games the Varetsky uh, the famous trainer who uh, unfortunately passed away recently but he he favored uh, King's engine attack style systems but there's a lot of interesting games to check out here as well in the model game section and maybe I'll pick out one, one or two for a video at some point soon uh, so let's go back to the overall uh, course page and make some final comments. I, I think um, this video is absolutely uh, excellent, this introduction video. And it really has challenged my own thinking, actually, for not starting with knight f3. Actually, just play e4 and really take them seriously if you want uh, to avoid complexity. Sometimes, especially if you're tired, you want to avoid all the, the complexity of very razor-sharp opening theory. So the king's engine attack is a great... Um, weapon of choice for that so if you're interested in this course at the moment it's at a reduced price i i believe uh there'll, there'll, there'll be an early uh, discount and there's a ton of video footage if you want the, the video extensions so the bitly link there is the one to check out two capital n small s t c b g all capitals there so two capital n small s capital t capital c capital b capital G or the link in the description so I hope you check this out if you really want a system embracing all of Black's major defenses uh, this is a very very interesting system which Bobby Fisher used in his early years as well to avoid uh, a lot of the, the main sharper variations of openings so a very very interesting weapon of choice indeed here reflected in this course hope you check it out thanks so much